Hi guys, so this is going to be a test uh, firing Talon igniters from the new Step 13 sequencer. Um, so all I've done here is I've got 12 1 meter Talon igniters plugged into the Step 13 and I've got little um, 1 inch pieces of visco fuse mounted in a block of wood that you can see just at the top of the screen there. Okay, so if I just open the unit up, you can see what we've got all of the cues connected in uh, and I'm just going to turn it on. You're going to see the battery voltage is at 100%. It's going to run through self-test, which is fine. So the first thing we want to do is connect that all of the Talon igniters are connected correctly and they've got good continuity. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to press and hold the test button and you're going to hear a beep because we've got good continuity on all 12 cues. So you can see that's a solid beep for as long as I hold down the test button. And you can see that all 12 cues, we can see there's good continuity there by the blocks on the screen. The X here just means we've got nothing connected to Q13. So, um, I think I'm going to set this up with uh, just an equal time delay between each queue. Um, and we can set that perhaps to uh, one second. Um, let's set that in now. Uh, and the other thing that we might want to do because we're using Talon igniters is adjust the pulse time from 0 0.2 seconds, which you would use for E matches, to 2 seconds long for Talon igniters. So this means that each cue is actually going to turn on when it fires for 2 seconds. And this gives the Talons enough time to heat up and actually ignite the fuse. So if we go back to equal time mode, you can see our time delay is still locked in there. And if I wanted to run and just simulate the sequence, I would just press the run button. And hopefully you can see there, it's running through each cue firing it with a one second interval. I'll just let that finish off. Right, so obviously we actually want to go ahead and fire the cues. Now you could just give it a voltage into the trigger input terminals here and that would start the sequencer going once it's been armed. So this would come from your existing firing system or just a battery on a length of wire. But there's also a manual override function as well. So if I hold down the arm button and then press the run button, that will actually simulate a trigger input pulse and actually fire the cues. So I'm just going to adjust the camera onto the igniters and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've just adjusted the cameras onto the igniters and I'll go ahead and hold down the arm button and I'll press the run button in 3, 2, 1. And you can see there, that was very successful.